Okay, so uh, closing comments. Okay, uh, I'm going to try and make them quite uh, brief because I'm sure we're all dying for a drink or something. Um, uh, my first closing comment, actually, is just to clarify something about what Matthew was saying. Um, and just to, just to clarify to everyone that uh, I don't normally go around emailing composers telling them what to do <laughs> in their pieces, you know, list of points, this is what you should do. Uh, it just happened to be that I'm, I'm part of his uh, PhD supervisory team, so that's, that's why he was... Uh, well, I think I'd asked for the instructions. Yeah, he'd asked he for the instructions. I said, please give me five minutes. Yeah. That, that's, that's what happened. So just in case anyone thought I was some sort of um, wanker that goes around <laughs> to night, <laughs> telling people uh, what's what. Um, okay, so my second closing comment is, uh, um, actually, I was just chatting to Richard uh, maybe at the break before, before the uh, very enjoyable presentation of uh, some rock music for Alan Thomas. And... Um, uh, we, we were chatting about the, uh, the, the round table discussion that we've done and, and, and about the film and, and uh, I, I uh, revealed that actually I'd, I sort of battered away a question of Richard's when I'm making some sort of characteristically crappy joke uh, and that was about whether, um, whether how I felt about uh, the music being uh, sort of chopped up uh, for Beatrice's film and I suppose what, what I should have said really was that I felt that uh, there was, a, there, was a, there was a situation of trust between us in, this, uh, in that she was uh, happy to uh, allow me to uh, do what I wanted and then she would do what she wanted and there was this sort of um, give and take, I suppose. Uh, so that's what I should have said instead of saying it cut me up, which is pretty, pretty, <laughs> cra pr pretty crap as a joke, really. Um, I've got, uh, yeah, I, I mean, I've got, you know, uh, I've a few things to say, but also uh, I've got loads of thanks. I think uh, that's, it's very important that, that, that I thank everyone, absolutely everyone, who's um, contributed to these uh, fantastic events over the last um, uh, 22 hours. Uh, and uh, a few more hours to go, actually. I'll just tell you a bit about that, actually. That is, for, for those who are um, able to come to the concert tonight in Milton Court, um, plus minus ensemble, um, will uh, perform and in the first half they will do a fantastic uh, new piece by Neil Luck uh, which also involves uh, some Guildhall students um, and that's the first half and the second half they will play uh, my octet which I wrote for them in 2008 and they will then play um, an, an arrangement that Mark Knoop has done for seven players he has arranged one of my orchestral pieces it's a, it's a, it's a, uh, I, I, yeah, I mean, I, I don't want to re review it before it's happened, but it is a remarkable <laughs> a feat of arrangement by Mark. Um, and uh, the, it's the piece that uh, Christian alluded to in his uh, talk this morning, cobbled section after cobbled section. So if you're able to come to that concert, I'm, I'll be, um, be great to see you. Um, okay, so my first thanks go to uh, Guildhall for, for, um, uh, and, and Milton Court for, for hosting um, and, and um, uh, financing, I suppose, a little bit, <laughs> uh, this, this uh, event over, over, over these two days. And uh, I'd like to thank my, my fantastic colleagues, uh, the uh, heads of composition, Julie Phillips, Holly Harding, and Paul Newland, for, for their um, work, all their work. Um, uh, Brenda MacDonald, obviously. <laughs> for doing loads of things. Um, and the AV Tech team, uh, Mark and Rosie, who've uh, been um, performing, uh, performing today, <laughs> performing stuff today. Um, last night's concert was fantastic um, in St. Giles Cripplegate and um, superbly curated by Christian Drew. And uh, I'm going to just read out all the composers' names and performers because I'm, uh, it was such an enjoyable event. Um, uh, there were uh, nine or eleven. No, hang on. Wait a minute. It's a quick count. Okay. There were nine. Nine uh, composers, students, or ex-students of Guildhall, except Alex Nikiparenko, who is not uh, an ex-student of uh, Guildhall. But he, yeah, but he has uh, had private lessons with me, and he's an honorary. Uh, he's got an honorary degree from here, hasn't he? I think. <laughs> 
Uh, OK, so uh, Matt Gear, Christian Drew, Patrick Hegarty, Ben Smith, Matisse Sonier, Lara Agar, Kit McCarthy, Alex Nikoprenko, and Sam Goodrum. And uh, they all produced pieces for last night. And um, uh, as well as uh, some of them, performers were also um, Harry Harrison, Darius Pemai, Rob Crean, Joshua Law, and Mel Melisande Lochak. I'm not sure I've said Melisande's name right. Okay. I should have checked that with you. Yeah. Um, Darius, I've never said your name in public before. Was that? Uh... Oh, okay, great. Great. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, thanks. Okay, great. Okay, so uh, the, anyway, the concert was absolutely um, glorious. And it was nice to see also that obviously, um, you know, there haven't been many concerts obviously in the last 18 months. And this just seemed like a sort of return to playing together. And there's a band there, isn't there? There's a band that's going to come back. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so I, I believe also uh, that uh, Paul Newland was in, involved in that organization of that. Now, uh, today's been absolutely fantastic and really uh, fascinating. Thank you. I'd like to thank all the uh, speakers for their, and performers for their presentations. Um, and also um, the, the, the symposium was coordinated by uh, Christian, Holly, Richard, and Jenny Gottschalk, who's curated a, uh, who was also on the, she was on the selection panel for the, um, for the, for the submissions and, and also has curated a playlist on her Sound Expanse website. Um, so, so the, I think, uh, and, and please, uh, if any of you remember someone I haven't thanked, you, you can put your hand up, say. Uh, but uh, Juliet Fraser is uh, someone we should uh, uh, really be uh, very grateful to for her coordination of the whole event. Uh, she's not here uh, because she's performing in Aberdeen, at least uh, Sound Scotland Festival, so there was a clash there for her. Uh, she'd love to have been here, but... Uh, she was here, very briefly, uh, during Julian's uh, presentation at uh, 10, 10 o'clock, because she's one of the two sopranos in ex Audi from which Julian played on. <laughs> so I think those are uh, my thanks. So thanks to you all for coming and, uh, and, and listening to the fantastic presentations today. And um, I've, I've learned a lot about myself. <laughs> <laughs> And more seriously, I've learned a hell of a lot from teaching here. Uh, I only started teaching, com as we clarified today, I, 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 I um, somehow got onto the payroll on the 13th of September 2010. Uh, so I didn't start actually teaching one-to-one -one composition until I was 50. So I felt, you know, I'd maybe, you know, put in some work to maybe have some knowledge to impart, I don't know. Um, but it's a great privilege to teach here and uh, the, uh, the fantastic students and colleagues I've learned so much from over over the years. Um, I suppose, uh, ooh, uh, yeah, when I left, uh, I left uh, Nottingham University in 1983 um, with a degree in music, actually, um, and I knew that uh, I wanted to sort of give it a go, you know, try and see if I could become a composer. Um, I've had a setback the year before. I got on to the uh, 1982 Dartington Summer School, um, uh, w which was um, led by a very famous composer who's no longer with us. Um, and on the first day, he gave a, a sort of um, outline of what we were going to be doing. And he also gave a very um, definite idea of what... Um, he thought composers should be able to do. And this included things like score read an orchestral work at the piano, uh, be proficient in two or more instruments, all sorts of other things like that, you know, really quite sort of um, difficult things. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, had an idea I immediately had a crisis about this. So I was 21. I, um, I went back to my room um, 
actually, I didn't go back to my room. I went back to my tent. Uh, the reason I was in a tent was partly to save money, but also uh, four students from Nottingham uh, the year before had been to Dartington, and they'd all camped. Um, uh, and uh, had a great time. And I thought, oh, great, I'll do that. But uh, unfortunately, my best friend at university, Graham Pitkin, uh, didn't get onto the course, which in itself is a scandal. <laughs> <laughs> and here am I revealing that in public for the first time. <laughs> but uh, the, uh, the upshot of that was that I was camping on my own. And, uh, you know, that combined with my immediate crisis about not being able to score read uh, Le Marte Son Metra at the piano <laughs> led, me, led me to have uh, an immediate crisis. I think, I can't do that. I can't do these things. I'm never going to be able to do these, do these things. Uh, it's over. So next morning, packed up my tent, walked to Tottenham, without telling anyone, walked down to Tottenham Station. This is a true story, by the way. Um, walked to Tottenham Station, um, thought that if I turned... If I returned home, my mother might be a bit angry with me. Looked on the map, see where I could go. Uh, I thought, oh, Penzance, end of the line. Uh, great. Uh, Graham lives there. I'll go and see him. You know, he couldn't, couldn't get onto the course, but I'll go and see him now. Right. So I got onto the train and just turned up at Graham's house. Uh, his mum was surprised, I think. Um, Graham was on the lure at the time, I remember that. <laughs> um, is he here, by the way? Oh, no, okay, that's great. Uh, yeah. Yeah, it is, yeah. Uh, anyway, had a good holiday in Penzance. And uh, then slowly I decided that I would still try and become a composer, even though I did not have the uh, attributes that the, um, the leader of the course at Dartington was... was telling me that I had to. Uh, very bad form of me not to inform anyone at Dartington that I was pissing off. Uh, so I wrote a, um, a letter to, as he was then, Peter Maxwell Davis, <laughs> and so apologized for, uh, you know, doing a bunk. And he wrote a really nice card back about not to worry kind of thing. I mean, I didn't say, you know, look, I can't, I can't do sight reading, you know, I, I can't do all these things, but I still want to be a composer. I didn't say that. But anyway, he wrote a nice card back. Uh, to my regret, I lost it somewhere during a house move sometime in the 1980s. So anyway, um, anyway I'm telling you now that it, it, it just existed at one point. Um, so I think, uh, so my, uh, my trajectory since then has been to try and find out how one can be a composer and... I didn't. I, I didn't. I, I told myself I wouldn't call myself a composer. For example, um, if someone asked me what I did, I wouldn't say I'm a composer until I'd written a piece that I was pleased, still pleased with, ten years later. So that happened around about mid 1990s. By which point I was in my mid 30s. So uh, I was caught out this once, but I was at a party in 1992, and uh, um, this really drunk guy said, "Yeah, what do you do then? What do you do?" And I said, uh, actually, he was more drunk than that. Yeah. Um, and I said, um, yeah, I'm a composer. He said, oh, yeah? What's your favorite chord then? Uh, my response was to write favorite chord for uh, solo accordion, which is uh, entirely based on the chord of uh, B flat major. Second favorite chord was based on F major. Third favorite chord, which was written for Matthew Greenall's 40th birthday, was C major. You get the. Once I realized it was a cycle of fifths, I stopped writing that. <laughs> So, uh, anyway, I was determined, yeah, so I, would only, I was very circumspect about calling myself a composer, but I finally, you know, find a, found a way of composing um, in, in the way that I felt suited me best. And I think, you know, that's true to say that, that there are many, many different ways of being composers, not one single way, and we, and we, we, we should all remember that when we're pursuing that idea. Okay, so my, my, um, I'd just like to take you back from my final paragraph, as it were, to um, uh, third week of July this year. Uh, you may remember it was a heat wave. 
So the week of um, 19th is week starting in 17th of July, I think. I was in the final um, throes of completing uh, my new piece for Juliet Fraser and Mark Knoop, um, which is a 50 minute piece for soprano and piano and sampler, and uh, received its premiere about three weeks ago and will be actually performed as part of this festival on the 3rd of December in, in London, the music you'd like to hear. Um, it was, I was uh, two days away from completing it, and okay, so I, you know, I had, even if I wanted to sunbathe, <laughs> I had no option. I'd missed two deadlines, so I, was, I, was, I had to finish it by Friday the 23rd, and it was, you know, it was hot. Um, that have really heated up. Uh, as many of you will know, I write almost course by hand. My hand was sticking to the paper quite a lot because it was so hot and it was quite uncomfortable. But I was, you know, I was plowing on. Immediately, my mind went back to um, July 1976. And uh, for those of you old, old enough to remember, uh, uh, it's famously known as the, the hot the hot summer of 1976, before, you know, before we'd really heard of global warming. So, you know, it was sort of, uh, it was legit. <laughs> yeah. So, um, I, I, it took me back to that mo month, 45 years before, because I remembered uh, a similar situation where I was sitting in my school music room, writing notes on paper, just writing them down. And that's because, um, quite recently, I decided I wanted to be a composer. Uh, and uh, I was 15 years of age, and uh, I'd, I'd, I'd sort of come to the idea of wanting to be a composer because I uh, was listening to a combination of um, classical chamber music and, on, on the one hand, and then rock, prog rock, stuff like Tubular Bells by Mike Oldfield on repeat. Um, decided I wanted to make something like Tubular Bells, partly fueled by the fact that the Manor Studios uh, in Shipton and Child were about a mile down the river from where I, I lived, where our family lived in Oxfordshire. Um, and so I, a friend of my mum's had given, given the family a four track tape recorder. So I tried to uh, um, make a piece on the tape recorder as, as Mike Oldfield had done overdubbing instruments. This came to a sorry end because, of course, I realized that I couldn't really play, play very, very many instruments <laughs> very well. So I thought, OK, write it down, write it down. Um, so I started to try and write it down. And this, actually, I'm just going to divert here because I should say that um, in writing down music, and uh, you know, a lot of us write down music, we are then, in, in, we are just, you know, we, we, we are totally at, um, we're totally in debt to performers. You know, we can't, our music won't live until the performers bring it to life. And I'd, I'd just like to say at this point before I, before I conclude my anecdote about 1976 slash 2021, um, that uh, I'm very, very grateful. I've been very, very lucky to work with so many fantastic performers. I'm not going to try and name them because I don't want to miss anyone out. So anyway, groups. Uh, except maybe, maybe I'll mention plus minus because they're playing tonight. Yeah, okay. Um, anyway, back to 1976. You know, in 1976, 15, I, I, knew, I knew how to, you know, I knew about notation because I was doing O-level music, uh, just for the younger, younger viewers. An O-level is a GCSE. <laughs> uh, I was doing O-level music, so I'd learned to write, you know, how to, you know, how to uh, read music and write music uh, out. But I didn't really know what I was, I just didn't know really what I was doing in terms of trying to write a piece. You know, I was just writing these notes on paper and, and getting annoyed because my hand was sticking to the paper. Anyway, there we are. Here I am in 2021, trying to finish this piece for Juliet and Mark. And I'm thinking back to that 15-year-old me doing exactly the same, realizing that there's a 45-year-old gap, 45-year gap. Now, by the 21st of July, the piece was finished on the 23rd of July, just in time to watch the Olympics in full. Um, but uh, by, the, by the Wednesday the 21st, I'm, I do, um, yeah, I realized that in, in 1976, I just didn't know what I was doing at all. In 2021, uh, I realized better what I'm doing. 
uh, maybe two days to go to the composition completion. I'm, I've got an idea. It's all come together. But for ages during this piece, I just didn't know what I was doing. And quite often don't know what I'm doing properly. I have things. I have things there, things on the, you know, on the metaphorical table just spread out. And I'm trying to make them sort of fit together in some way or, or you know, coalesce. That's what I'm trying to do. And I, I remembered to, I had a workshop with Mark and Junior about uh, um, in May time or something. I, and, and I was still, you know, I was still in the early part. Maybe it was April. I don't know. Anyway, I was still in the early part of the composition. And uh, I told them that I didn't really know what I was doing. They thought that was quite funny. Um, <laughs> and in a way, it is. And uh, I, I, think, uh, I, think, I think I sort of know what I'm doing. But the punchline is, I don't really know what I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> so that's it. That is the punchline. Uh, thank you very, very much for listening and, and uh, contributing and everything. And I hope to see um, uh, as, many as, possible, uh, as, many, as many of you as possible at the concert. And uh, thanks very much. Five o'clock on the dot. Thank you. And I should say also that I'm very, very touched by all the nice things that people have said about me. But please continue to say them tomorrow. <laughs>